how's it going? All good, all excitement around my camp, you know what, I'm happy man, uh, the eye has been healing up very nicely, so I'm a happy man. Mm-hmm. Now congratulations on defending your IBO welterweight title against Matthew Hatton, are you completely satisfied with the performance? No, not at all. You know what? I'm, I'm, I'm my worst critic, and uh, I know I've got so much more to give. You know what? If the cut, unfortunately, the whole game plan changed from from the cut eye from round seven. I almost had hit in round seven. It was it was about to go, and um, yeah, my whole game plan just changed because the bleeding was so fiercely. I couldn't. I had blue vision in the right eye. So for half of the second round of the second half of the fight, I couldn't see properly with all the blood running into the eye, and. Uh, you know, with a cut in the eye like the bad as that, you know, my whole game plan changed. I couldn't gauge as much. I couldn't be taking the big shots. Couldn't take the chances, and that forced me to to be a little bit more careful and keep the hands up. And uh, I couldn't attack as I liked to because uh, of the cut in the eye. Do you feel that going through that during a fight and getting on the other side with the win that it, it it's you've you've gained experience that will be more valuable later on in your career? Do you feel like you've learned from it? Yes, yes, of course, uh, 100%. I've, I've, I've gained experience in this fight. I've learned some things in this fight. Uh, Matthew Etten is a, is, a, is a very... He's been around the block, you know. He's a, he's a very clever fighter. We had a good chat after the fight the next morning. And yeah, I've, I've gained some experience. I'm happy with the, with the results. I'm happy with my outcome as well. But um, I'm happy to walk away with uh, learning something from a veteran and... Uh, and uh, well-known fight, a big bit and I'm not like Matthew Hatton. Yeah, now, I will say I wasn't cheering for you because I'm from Manchester myself and I'm a big fan of the Attens. What did you know of Matthew before the fight? I knew, I knew a lot about Hatton, you know, I studied him, I knew Matthew and uh, I knew Matthew's gonna, he's just a typical tough come forward fight to throw some bombs and uh, I expected it but uh, I also at the same time knew that if you put Matthew Hatton on his back foot, He's not comfortable. He doesn't like being on the back foot. And I told him in his face, I said, you're too small. I said, I will put you on the back foot with ease. And he laughed at me and he said to me, never in your life will you put me on my back feet. Uh, you, you don't have the strength to put me on my back foot. And uh, well, I, I showed it from around two on. I just proved that uh, I was too strong for him. He couldn't come forward. And uh, he told me, he told me, he said to me, you're a very strong lad. He said, uh, you put me on my back foot very easy and you're too quick. And uh, we knew he's going to throw the left, hook, the, the left hook all night because uh, the, they were talking and uh, I saw Matthew likes the left hook. So he couldn't catch me on the left hook because we were weaving. Right? If you look at the fight, I would land a jab and weave the left hook. And uh, he just couldn't land. He got frustrated. Mm-hmm. Now, you won pretty convincingly, but you couldn't get him out of there. As we know, Matthew Atten is a tough fighter, as you said, and he's not been stopped in 10 years. He even went 12 rounds with Canelo Alvarez. Did you expect it's to go the 12 rounds? Brook. Did you expect to go the 12 rounds? I did, I did, I did. I said it before, and uh, I said, you know what, Matthew has proven to be a very tough customer. Uh, he went 12 rounds with Alvarez. Alvarez couldn't put him down, and... Uh, we knew we in for 12 rounds, but I also knew that I've got the, 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 the capability of hurting him. And he admitted to me, he said to me, you hit me around seven, you guys hurt me. And, uh, but uh, no, we tried for 12 rounds, we expected to go 12 rounds. Mm-hmm. No, you've only fought once outside of South Africa, I believe. Are you looking to come over to Europe and America soon, or do you see no rush? Absolutely, absolutely. I'm, I'm praying for opportunity, you know what? I've been in South Africa, you know, it's just we don't get the opportunity to fight outside. And I think now, I don't care where I fight, I would have beaten Matthew Hatton in Manchester. Uh, I, I, I don't believe that would, would have made a difference, but uh, I'm just praying for opportunity to be able to fight in the UK or in the, in the States. And, uh, yeah, we, we're working on a few things, so hopefully very soon my next fight will definitely be out there, but I'm, I'm praying for opportunity to to maybe come to the UK and uh, build some fans there. Yeah. Now, you're part of a group of young South African fighters who are starting to put South Africa on the map in terms of boxing. You've got you, you've got Tommy Gunnar-Susan, you've got Hecky Budler, and you've got more established guys like Mafabula and Yoye down at minimum weight. 
what do you think the reasons are for this for this growth of South African boxing? Absolutely, it's excitement. It's excitement all around for 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 South Africa. You know, it's like you say, we're slowly busy putting South Africa on the map. We got the the IBF world champion as well, Marutu Mzulani. And uh, so it's exciting that uh, we're getting the South African name out there and that it's nice to compete against the, the big boys. And like I said, hopefully, playing for opportunities soon, uh, we'll be able to fight outside the country like I just hope to fight outside. So it's excitement. Boxing in South Africa is picking up. Mm-hmm. You've got a really good, a great welterweight division and a really, really good light middleweight division above you. What names are you looking at? Who are the guys that you're looking at for the future? You know what, I, I, I spoke, you know what, I've, it's, it's a dream of any fight to fight uh, the top boys. It's, it's my dream to fight anyone outside in, in the top ten. And, uh, well, I spoke to, to, to Matthew and, uh, you know, we were sharing a few things. And uh, he believed that I could give Shenko, Shenko uh, uh, a tough go. He says he believes I can beat Shenko. He says I'm too quick. He says I'm a tough boy. So we're looking at Schenko, we're looking at the likes of, uh, well, maybe in two or three more fights we might get a shot, uh, we, we, we hope to get a shot against Pauli Malagnaghi, which would make a nice fight, I believe. Um, we're looking at likes of, uh, well, you got Kelly Brook and all of those, which is uh, above the level for me now, I'll admit it. But with, uh, with a lot of training and uh, maybe in the next two or three years I might fight one of those boys. But we're looking for a top name, Shenko, or whoever. If you if you beat if you start to beat a couple of these guys, are, they, are you going to look for the really the really big dogs in the the division? You're looking at Pacquiao, Marquez. Are you hoping to get in the ring with one of these guys? Absolutely. You know, what? I was speaking to my trainer just uh, yesterday, and we said, you know what, Pacquiao has been losing two fights in a row. You know, maybe we might get a phone call to say, well, this kid is a tough kid. He beat Matthew, he went 12 rounds. Maybe they would like to fight me for revival. You never know, you know boxing. You know, and they might pick me as a, as a revival fight for Pacquiao. I don't know, but uh, it is my dream to, to fight a Pacquiao, a Marquez, a Mayweather, whoever. Just, just it's, it's any fighter's dream. And uh, I don't believe, I, I, I'm a tough lad, I'm a tough kid, I'm always super fit. And uh, even Matthew said I hit you with a lot of hard punches, but you didn't even you didn't even you shook it off. And uh, I don't believe that these dogs can stop me, but I believe uh, I can go 12 rounds with them. So it's my dream, absolutely. I wish to get a phone call. If I can get a phone call, I'll, I'll start training, and uh, I'll, and then that will be a dream come true. Mm-hmm. Now, are you getting a lot of glo- a lot of love and attention globally? Are you starting to get p- on people's radars? I do, I do. You know what? It's amazing. Uh, for 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 the first time, actually, for the first time in my career, now that I've beaten Matthew, I'm starting to get uh, global attention. You know, people from all over SMSing me, wishing me uh, the best for my future, seeing they saw me fight. A lot of people are positive about me. A lot of people are negative about me, but. But uh, it's not. I'm getting global attention. It, it, it's, it's unbelievable. I love it. Well, yeah, well, exactly the fact that I've contacted you is, is proof of that. I um, I knew of your name, but I didn't, I'd never watched you fight until I, I witnessed you beat Matthew Watton, and I, I was very impressed, I will say. That's very really true. You know what? I keep telling the fact that I'm living, it's, it's sad that, that, that I'm living, you know, when we live in South Africa, we don't get the opportunities. It's sad. You know, people don't know us because we're we a country that, I don't know, people just don't pay attention to. And uh, now, like you said, now that I fought Matthew, you know my name uh, for the first time. And there's a lot of other people that now for the first time know my name. And uh, I'm just happy for the opportunity and uh, I hope it can just grow. Well, uh, alongside South Africa, Australia is starting to become on the map. You had an all Australian middleweight title. You've got Sam Solomon, Felix Stern, you've got Daniel Daniel Gill, you had Kat Cedis who just retired. Australia is also on the way up. Also, you're right, you're right. And you know what, I'm actually good friends with Lamont and Doe. And uh, Lamont was begging me for a fight. I said, Lamont, I will go nowhere beating you. I said, I need to fight guys. I said, I need to fight guys that's going to bring me on the map. But I'm actually good friends with Lamont. And like you said, Australia is on its way up as well. Mm-hmm. 
how many times are you looking to fight in 2013? And what... Well, we are hoping for at least another three fights. We we big. We are hoping for another three fights. Mhm. Mm what position would you like to be in by the end of the year? I would like to be. You know, I'll tell you. I'm just looking at the ratings now, and um, I'm rated number seven in the world right now on the old way division. So I would just like to be in a position, maybe make. Uh, I would like to stay in the top ten in the world, and maybe get another spot like a part and. Uh, Maybe get a big shot, but by the end of the year, against a big name. That, that's, my, that's my goal. I'd like to have a big shot against some big name by the end of the year. Thinking long term, what one thing are you looking to achieve? Are you looking to be top 10 pound for pound? Are you looking for multiple world titles? What, what, what motivates you? Absolutely. Multi. My dream is now my dream is to become a world champion. Even though a lot of people don't write to me as a world title, but... I do because, you know, Manny Pacquiao had an idea, Ricky Hatton had an idea. A lot of top fighters had an idea that to start. So my long-term dream is to become a three times world champion and uh, get a shot at the WBC or a WBA world title. That, that's my long-term dream and fight uh, top pound the best fighters. That's my dream. Yeah, well, the, I, the IBO title is becoming more and more known and more and more recognised because you've got... Gennady Golovkin, who's IBO, you've got Vladimir Klitschko, you've got all the, the, the Antonio Tarver, it's, a, it's becoming more of a more respected see, belt. I'm happy you know that, I'm so happy that you mention it and you know it, you can hear you know your boxing, because a lot of people SMS me and say, what is the IBO belt? We never heard of it, I said, how can you, and, and then the sad news is, people from the UK, they SMS and say, your belt is shit, and I say, but Ricky, I can edit it. I said, Manny Pacquiao and the kids go there, how can you say my belt is shit? And uh, like you say, uh, it's getting a recognition, it's bringing you somewhere. Well, yeah, of course. You, no, no one, no one's claiming, and I'm sure that you don't claim that you're the best fighter in the world because you've got the IBO belt. But of course, some people fight and fight and train and train, and they put their whole lives into boxing, and they don't win anything. So you know, they, they, you've not, you've not walked into the title anyway. Yeah, true, true, it's really true. Mhm. Mm yeah, it's just um, it's just ignorance when people make comments like that. You gotta appreciate people for what they've achieved. Now, one thing. Thank you. Now, of the current title holders, who are you looking? Which one would you go for? You know, your Bradleys, your Alexanders. Which one of them would you like to fight to unify? Well, well, I think I'm in the top ten now in the IBF. I was before, before I fought Matthew, I was rated number 11 by the IBF. So I haven't checked that thing again. I'm sure I will be in the top 10 right now by the IBF. But, but honestly, I would like to go for the WBA belt. Uh, the Pauli Malignaggi, the WBA belt. Is, is Malignaggi one of them guys that you think you could have a good go at? Absolutely. And I'll tell you why. Because like myself, Malignaggi is not a big puncher. And... Um, He's quick with his hands, and uh, I'm very quick with my hands. If I, you know, stars make fights, and I believe me, and the poly can't fight under pressure. We've studied him, he doesn't like to fight under pressure. He's good on his feet, but if you put him in the corner, you put him down, you chase him hard, he slows down. And uh, I believe a fight with me and Polly would, would be a very, very nice, competitive, interesting fight. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Which, um, what what's your favourite current fighter? What do you say? What what's your favourite current like who's your favourite current fighter at the moment? What's my favourite fighter? Yeah, who's your favourite fighter at the moment? Who'd you like to watch? Oh, well, live, uh, well if I could ever watch a, a fighter live it would probably be Mayweather. You know, it it would probably be at the Mayweather or uh, or, uh, you know, the top dogs like a Marquez or a Pacquiao. But my favourite, you can't deny it, it's, it's, it's Mayweather. Mm -hmm. Now, um, looking back in history, which fighter would you most like to have fought? Would start, which fighter, in the, in the, if I look back? Yeah, yeah. I would probably, I would probably have loved to fight um, Sugar Shane Mosley, eh? Yes, yes, Sugar Shane. Mm, okay. Um, okay. I'm happy to um, draw this to a close now. It, is there anything that you'd like to pass on to the fans? Any sort of message? 
No, I would just like to, no, as you just know, I'd just like to put, you know, to put a message in there that uh, it was an honor for me fighting for, fighting against Matthew Hatton from the UK. And uh, I hope to, to build uh, some fans over from the UK now that I've, I hope that I've got some respect. And uh, I would just love to, to, to come over there and build up fans and, uh, and uh, fight in the UK. That's it. Yeah, is there anything that you'd like to shout out? Any form of Twitter or businesses that you'd like to promote? Can you repeat, please? Are you breaking up? Is there any form of Twitter that you'd like to shout out or any form of social networking information? Uh, yeah, well, on Twitter, people can, can follow me on Twitter. It's, it's very easy. It's at the heat, at T H E H E A T double zero one. People can follow me on Twitter and uh, on Facebook. It's just very simple. It's Chris Van Yerden. And uh, yeah, it will be nice if people can, can follow me and uh, and see how I become. Well, I'm destined to be great. I okay. know it. I just know it. You know, you got a feeling inside. And uh, I'm destined. To, my name will be will soon be up there with the big names. And uh, I promise you, I will be fighting big names. And you will not. You'll call me again. Yeah, well, call me again as you of course. Call me again as because you told me so. Yep, of course. Um, next time you fight, I'll um, I'll give you a call when it's announced, and we'll talk about that. Ah, wow, they, they, that's very nice of you. Yeah, that will be nice. Right, thank you very much. Take care. Thank you for your time, John. Have a lovely time. Okay, bye.